Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Flying and Dine. Today we are hitting Mexico City. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. There's just so much to do. So expect a lot of street food, a lot of gourmet food, hotels, spas, pyramids, culture. And I am hitting a wedding. So I'll try to crash the wedding for you guys with a nice vlog. Tom and Collins will be playing at the wedding. They're very famous house DJs. So I'm very excited. Um, so without any further ado, let's do this. I finally arrived in Mexico City. Now, before we get to all the fun stuff, the street food, the pyramids, the partying and the wedding and all that good stuff, I do want to give you guys some tips when you come to Mexico City. Never take a taxi, especially if you know you're American and you don't speak the language or you don't speak Spanish in general. Um, I recommend you always take Uber, Capify, or my personal preference, it is a little more pricey, but a private chauffeur is always better. Um, I can give you guys the contact information of the company I use. They're great, they just picked me up. They're super professional, friendly, and you know, I feel super safe. So I'm on my way to the hotel, I'm gonna shut up so that we can get this started. guys this is the hotel room it's a standard room here in the intercontinental we got an amazing price because i'm at a wedding and they got a special deal and i got the city view the rate for per night was 148 i don't think that's bad at all this hotel is amazing it's in an amazing location very central it has a nice gym a nice spa amazing restaurant who i'll show you later on but you can't beat $148 a night for this room. They usually do go for about 200 to 250, but if you can get a special rate, I definitely recommend it. The shower comes with amen nice towels, amenities. So I'm going to hit the road so we can get eating, drinking, and much more. Our first stop is D'Amico. It's an Italian restaurant. It's relatively new. I've never been here. Now I'm eating, I'm eating up with two friends. One's an actor as well, and the other one's a singer. So I'm very excited. I've never been here. I'm gonna try a lot of different restaurants this time to try to bring you guys different varieties. Now, Mexicans love spicy. <clears throat> and when a Mexican tells you something is spicy, you better be careful because it's very spicy. I personally love spice, so I drenched my pasta in spice and wow, this was hot. So be aware of that. If a Mexican says it's spicy, take caution because it's gonna burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm colorblind, but apparently my Mexi Mexican friend told me that this is red. Yet Red, white, and what Green. color? Green. Green. <laughs> he says it's for the Mexican flag, but no, it's an Italian Green. restaurant. So we gotta do a little swirl, swirl. Yummy, yummy. Y 23 son los años que tienes. 
Pero no, 25. Pero en el espectáculo, por favor. ¡Órale! Max Vivian's got jokes. That lunch was absolutely delicious. Um, if you are going to lunch here with local people, please be advised that lunches last anywhere from three to four hours. I got here at 3.30 and I'm leaving right now. It's like, it's seven. So three hours and a half. I'm gonna head over to the hotel, take a nap because I'm destroyed. But at night, I believe I'm going to some show. Um, I'm gonna try to find some street food, if not some other restaurant. And tomorrow we're hitting the pyramids. So I have to wake up very early. Um, but I hope you're enjoying so far. Another thing I love about this hotel is the spa. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of everything, but I'm gonna take a quick shower because I was able to squeeze in an 80 minute massage. By the way, 80 minute massage was about $65 in the States. That's about $200. So I'm so excited. I can't wait to relax. Um, I'll get back to you guys in a little while. Au Pied de Couchon is a French restaurant that's open 24 hours. It's one of the many restaurants here at the Intercontinental and one of my personal favorite. I've been coming here since I was four years old, um, which yes, I'm young, but that's 21 years of coming to this restaurant. So they know me and the service is always amazing. Um, I'm actually gonna come here many times throughout this vlog at different points of the night. Um, sometimes at five in the morning, other times at midnight, other times for dinner but it's absolutely delicious. The escargots are great. They have the original Au Pied de Couchon in France, in Paris. If you want to try this restaurant out, you could go in Paris. I'll try to leave the address of the Paris one in the description, but these were the escargots. They were absolutely delicious. They weren't overpowering. I just ordered way too much. I ordered 12 for myself. Alrighty. Let's see if these snails are any better than the ones I had in Paris. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it up here or here somewhere. So you guys can go check the Paris video out. But in the meantime... I have to say these are... They're amazing. They're a lot better. They're great. They're amazing. I'm headed towards a piano bar called Bocas Piano Bar. I'll put the name um, down here in the description. Um, I have some friends here from Mexico that are there singing. She happens to be a singer. I don't think I'll be singing today, but I wanna have a drink or two before I go to the pyramids tomorrow. That should be a lot of fun. Um, it's right next to my hotel. And by the way, guys, tip when you come to Mexico, if you're not familiar with the area, go with Uber or a chauffeur or, you know, just watch your surroundings. You'll be fine, especially in the area of Polanco, which is, if you've been to Miami, the equivalent to Brickell. Um, it's a very nice and safe area. So stay around here, especially at night. Just never walk alone. You know, don't wear showy watches stuff like that don't film with your phone outside <laughs> and walk on the streets i kind of feel like a local because i used to live here but those are just some tips to look out for and never drink the water always drink bottled water so i'm gonna put my phone away now because you know So sorry for the funky music I had to put over this video, but unfortunately YouTube flags certain songs, but the piano bar was amazing, relatively amazing prices. There's two sections, the part where they have live music with people that actually work there, 
And then they have the karaoke bar where you could sing. Both are extremely fun. Um, great time. The piano, sitting around the piano was fantastic. And you can pay anywhere between $10 per person to $200, depending on what type of night you are trying to have. But one thing Mexicans do know how to do is party and sing. So as long as there's music, a microphone, and tequila, you're guaranteed a good night. So my first night in Mexico was a total success. Now it's time to go to the pyramids, but before this is Cafe Urbano here in the Intercontinental Hotel. They have a very wide variety of options, food op, uh, of course food, because it's a restaurant, but fruits, juices, tortillas. They have an open buffet. Every day they change it. So throughout the video, you'll see the breakfast of the, of the trip. This morning there was eggs, chilaquiles, chicken and mole, which is like a mole, which is a chocolate sauce. I don't really know how to explain that. And then they have your typical American breakfast as well. And I'm sure you haven't seen this very often. These are nopales filled with cheese, pretty much cactus filled with cheese. They're delicious. And these are chilaquiles, which are pretty much nachos drenched in sauce. All right, guys, I'm in a gas station. I don't know where, to be honest, because we're on these nice tour buses. Don't go to the pyramids in a taxi or rent a car. I don't recommend it. Always go with like someone that knows, a tour guide, etc. But we're heading to Teotihuacan, which is the pyramids of the sun and the moon. I'll give more of an explanation over there. But yeah, it's hot. It's pretty for Jiggle hot. So here we are in Teotihuacan, the landing spot for the sun and the moon pyramid and for the god Quetzalcoatl. Um, three different tribes lived here. We know most, most of us know the Mayas and the Aztecs, but before that were the Teotihuacanans um, in about 100 BC. They eventually abandoned their lands. Now the actual reason isn't really known, but the tour guide explained to us that it's because they mistreated the land so much because they needed the materials to build the pyramids that they had to go. Now, he also mentioned that if you know, I'm colorblind, so I don't see what he was talking about, but most of the pyramids are red and the interior of the houses are red. This would be your typical house. He said that that's just because it was a very easy color to obtain back then. But look at the size of this thing. The pyramid of the sun is 65 meters tall but about 720 meters wide. And the pyramid of the moon is about 45 meters tall. But these buildings are so impressive, especially since, you know, they didn't have the technology that we have today. So it's impressive to see how, how things like this were, were able to be made. And of course it was made using slaves, but ask yourselves, leave it in the comments. Do you think that how do you think that this is even possible? Are some of you archaeologists or, or do you have a theory of how this could be done? Now, this avenue in particular is very cool. The Aztecs named it La Avenida de los Muertos, the Avenue of the Dead. Here, I'll show you closer up. They called it this because the Mayas would bury dead dignitaries, people of status along this avenue as a respect. And when the Aztecs got here, they started excavating, of course, and they found these dead bodies. So that's how it adapted the name of La Avenida de los Muertos or the Avenue of the Dead. Now, there's so much more history. I'm trying to go over hours and years of history within five minutes for this segment. But I really recommend you guys look it up online because it's very, very interesting. All right, so I didn't talk throughout much of the vlog of the pyramids. I'm just gonna do voiceovers. It's a lot easier because it's a lot of information to take in, but it's really hot. So I stopped to get one of these paletas. I don't know what they're made of. It tastes like 
Es de fruta, tío. Claro. <laughs> I'm here with Diego from Dora the Explorer. Explorer. Very good, though. Ben. But I hope you guys enjoyed the voiceovers. And there's so much more to come. Street food, street tacos, tamales. I don't know what else we'll find. So stay tuned. But in the center is a hole. LA. In the, in the center is a hole. Friend from LA. Why? Why? What's the purpose of that hole? Drainage. Drainage. So we are talking about a very advanced society in relation with that time. And they reutilize the Guys, another tip I do want to give you, make sure you bring sunscreen. I'm the type of person that doesn't like wearing sunscreen, but when I come here, I definitely put it on. You may not feel the heat, but as soon as you leave here, the sun's very strong and you need to protect your skin. I also recommend you bring a hat. And whether you're spiritual or not, I really recommend you sit in the middle of these two pyramids and just try to meditate. You can find podcasts on Spotify, or other platforms, but it's definitely recommended. After such a long morning at the pyramids, we were starving. So here we are in Polanquito. It's like the central area filled with restaurants here in Polanco which is, if you skip through the video, I said it's the safest place to be in, in Mexico City, in my opinion. But this area is great. It's full of terraces, restaurants, bars, ice cream shops, candy shops. It's very family oriented as well, but there is something for everyone. You know, if you're young travelers looking for a cool bar, you're a family looking for a nice restaurant, look at all these fruits everywhere. It's just, Mexico is such a magical place. And right now we're headed to Brasi. Uh, Brazi, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, whether it's in English or Spanish. It's like a, a fusion of cuisines, which you'll find a lot here in Mexico because it is such an international place. This one in particular had tacos, Spanish food, Italian food, all type of cuts of meats. Um, so let's check out the food and tacos and all the good stuff. So Mexico City is a city that you need at least a month to get to know because there's so many things to do. But this is Parque Lincoln. If you want to take a nice stroll through it around Saturdays, they actually have a nice market, which I totally recommend. And tonight we're going to the rehearsal dinner, which was in a super nice rooftop filled with drinks, tacos, dancing. Let's check it out. So as I mentioned before, I was coming to Mexico City for a wedding in specific and my friends that got married had a brilliant idea. Our rehearsal dinner was in a taco uh, taqueria, which was great because everyone got to know each other before the wedding and it was honestly such a great idea. Look at how great these tacos are. They're tacos al pastor. Take a look at me enjoying my tacos. These are tacos al pastor. We dip it in the hot sauce. If a Mexican says it's hot, it's hot. So good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Son de carne o vegano? Carne. Al pastor? Gracias. After our great rehearsal, oh, by the way, this is the Angel of Independence. This is Reforma. It is the main avenue in Mexico City. And that's the Angel of Independence, which you'll see in so many soap operas and shows. But as you know, here in South America, parties don't end at 12. That's right when they start. 
So as soon as we ended in the restaurant, we headed to the secret underground club and things got a little different, but it was definitely an experience. I hope you guys enjoy. Like after any amazing night partying in Mexico, I had to eat tacos. I would usually go for street tacos, they're the best. They're a dollar or 50 cents per taco. But I had the wedding the very next day, so I did not want to have stomach problems, which already the paletas of the pyramid were not helping at all. But these tacos at Al Pie de Cuchon were delicious. It was about three in the morning with a little hot sauce. My mouth is watering as I'm filming this voiceover because I remember the taste. Fantastic. I'll show you guys a first view perspective of it's me two tasting morning. them. This is the only thing I can find open. I didn't want street food because I have a wedding tomorrow. Street food and street tacos are the best, but I don't want to miss my wedding tomorrow. So. Mm. So good. These are ribeye tacos. So these are like very high quality tacos. They're great. I can't wait to go to sleep, but tomorrow I'm going to show you guys the Basilica, Frida Kahlo's house, and so much more. So stay tuned and the wedding's coming up. So keep watching, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell notifications. And here's my Instagram. I'll see you guys in the morning. Alright guys, so change of plans in the itinerary. I didn't buy my tickets for Frida Kahlo's house. So I'm gonna try to go tomorrow, but I'm here in El Palacio de Bellas Artes. Um, the architect was Adamo. He was an Italian architect. The construction started in 1904. It took over 30 years and it was finally completed in 1934. I recommend you research um, a little bit of the history on Wikipedia. I wanna keep it short so I can show you guys a little bit of everything, but there's been all types of events here with foreign dignitaries, um, very, very famous artists around the world. And they have impressive murals inside, which I'm gonna go in right now to show you. Murals by Diego Rivera, which was Frida Kahlo's husband or boyfriend. I don't recall if they ever got married, but let's go inside so we can check it out. And one event I do recommend if you're in Mexico and you can come here and watch the performance is the Mexican Flor Cloric Ballet, El Flor Clorico Nacional de Mexico. It's impressive. Um, I try to watch it every time I come. I'm a little tight with time because I have the wedding right now, so I can't on this trip, but let's head inside. So if you watch my vlogs, you know that something goes wrong in every trip. Apparently they're closed for a private event today, but I'm gonna try to show you more views and I will try to come tomorrow to show you the murals inside because they're absolutely impressive. Um, but I'm gonna get a better view from over here. From here, we're going to El Zócalo, which is, I'm not even gonna say anything because it's, it's so impressive when you guys see it. It's a huge square. There's a cathedral, which is like slanted. Um, many artists have performed there, Madonna, Justin Bieber, Ricky Martin, any high-end artist you can possibly think of has performed in El Zócalo. And I'm gonna show you guys that right now. 
And one of the things I find very interesting about South America in general, I haven't really seen this in the States, sometimes in Europe, these tents here is because people are protesting. I'm gonna find out the exact reason why. Um, I'm gonna ask the chauffeur, but it's just very, very interesting. Everyone here is protesting at the moment. So where we are right now is El Zócalo. It's the city center here in Mexico, I guess kind of like a downtown. And this hotel here on the corner is the Majestic Hotel. Many famous people have stayed here. And interestingly enough, that's one of the oldest hotels in Mexico and I believe in the Western Hemisphere. So that's very cool. You've probably seen this building in Fast and the Furious, the latest movie. In the opening scene when Kate del Castillo is looking down on this beautiful plaza which as you can see the Mexican flag is there many famous people have had their concerts here such as Madonna, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Michael Jackson, you name it. Um, the only bad thing about El Zócalo is that they're always closing it down. Now there is a very cool market here on Sundays I recommend you guys check out because they have everything. This is where I ate my first crickets. They have books, they have all sorts of spices, spices, sorry, artisanal things. Um, I don't know if that's a COVID test or a seminar that they're giving. There's just always something different in El Zócalo. And the building to our right hand side is where the president actually lives. This is where Mexico has their huge September 15th Independence Day event. Excuse my ignorance if it's September 15th or 19th, but I'm pretty sure it's the 15th. And the president gives his speech here at this plaza. But it's not a bad view to have, right? Um, I don't know if the Mexican people are happy with his president, with their president at the moment. But let me tell you something. The guy has a tremendous view. market I've never been to, La Ciudadela. Let's check it out. I really like this market because it's very authentic. It feels very Mexican. You know, people are fixing guitars from scratch. All the artisanal work you see here, all these masks, everything's made here. It's not made in a factory, then brought later. In fact, that's why a lot of the stores have do not take pictures. Of course, I took pictures of the ones that 
did allow it, but all these quilts are also made here. The hats, the lucha masks, those they do bring from outside, but all the artisanal things are truly impressive because they make it here. And if you wanna adapt something of the piece, they'll do it for you. And the people here are just so into their work and, and so I'm trying to look for the right word, proud of their work. And it, it's honestly a very humbling experience. Now the part I've been looking forward to most of my trip, the street tacos. These taco, the tortillas you see right here, you're gonna see how she makes them by hand, by herself. You can put anything in them, chorizo, sausage, chicken, cheese, there's gorditas. Just the taste it has, I know it doesn't look the most appetizing, but they taste amazing. I ordered a chicken one, a steak one, and a chorizo one. Um, I didn't eat all of them, of course. I had a little bit of each because, you know, the wedding. But absolutely delicious. Just take a look at how she makes them by hand. She manages her whole post. She takes the payment. She... This is a, a really hard task, guys, but so, so worth it. I'm very glad I got to eat these tacos right outside of El Mercado de la Ciudadela, which was great because from here I'm going to the Basilica. But look at how she... Oh, yeah. Very, very cool experience seeing how they make these tortillas from scratch. Now, as you see, the steak doesn't look the best and it, it doesn't look very sanitary, but they are the best tacos and you have to have them, but try to have them the last day. So this is a little more religious aspect about this trip and, and Mexico and South America in general. They're very religious, particularly in Mexico. They're very devout to the Virgin Mary, uh, La Virgen de Guadalupe. Here the priest um, is, how do you say it? I don't know how to say it in English. Está dando la bendición to the people that want to come and get the blessing. There we go, from the priest. And it's, it's a cool experience. He wets you with holy water and says a couple of prayers. Um, like I, I will repeat many times on this video, even if you're not religious, this is something you should check out and it's impressive to see the amount of people that come here. Okay guys, so we're here in the Basilica of La Virgen de Guadalupe, the Virgin Mary. Um, people here in Mexico are so devout and right now it's, it's pretty empty even though it's packed with people, but there's some Sundays you come and it's incredible to see the faith that some people have. Now, whether you're religious or not, I totally recommend you come here because it's honestly very shocking to see how such humble people that live off very basic means, the, their faith is like everything for them. And, and it's, it's truly incredible. You see people, mothers crawling on the 
floor on their knees as a homage, I guess, to, to the Virgin Mary. Now, the story goes that the Virgin Mary appeared to the Indian Juan Diego many, many years ago. Um, and we're gonna pass by the, I don't know how to say it in English, the, the frame where the Virgin Mary looks spectacular. And like I said, even if you're not religious, I totally recommend this experience because it's absolutely beautiful. After I pass through the conveyor escalator, whatever it's called, uh, so you guys can see the Virgin Mary. I'm gonna go up the mountain. It's El, Mon El Monte de Tepeyac, uh, where the Virgin Mary appeared. It's beautiful. The, the gardens are incredible. Um, and once again, this place, the energy is beautiful. It's, it's incredible. And then I'm gonna try to go into the cathedral, which I think it is open. If you notice, I'm gonna get closer now, but it is a little slanted, I believe, because of an earthquake. It sunk. Um, but it's still standing and this place is just incredible. So let's head inside. Now this little mountain I'm going up right now is called El Monte de Tepeyac. Little history lesson. Supposedly this is where the Virgin Mary appeared to the Indian Juan Diego, which funny enough Dora appeared when they said Diego. Not funny, sorry, serious matter. This is where the Virgin Mary <laughs> appeared to the Indian Juan Diego. Right here in this spot, if you see that statue right in front of me, that's where it happened. Um, so kind of like a pilgrimage for the Muslims going to Mecca. This is kind of like going up the, the mountain as a sign of respect. Of course, it's nothing as serious as going to Mecca, but I come up every single time I come. The views are absolutely spectacular. Um, and it is a hard walk because I am from Miami. I'm used to being at sea level and as it is, Mexico is elevated and definitely going up this mountain is, is not an easy task. But the view when you get up there is totally worth it. So like any tourist attraction, uh, the Basilica does have a huge souvenir shop downstairs. It's full of anything you can think of related to religion, the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, God, the church. They have clothing, necklaces, jewelry, artisanal stuff. I definitely recommend you check them out. Um, oh, there's these really cool rosaries that smell like rose petals. They're called Rosarios de Petalo de Rosa. 
Those are the ones I really recommend. Rosario de Petalos de Rosa. I really recommend you get those or something from here. All right, so that was a fun day of tourism. I'm gonna try my best to go to Frida Kahlo's house tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's open, but I'm gonna check the tickets online right now. Today's the day, it's an exciting day. I have a wedding in three hours. I'm gonna hit the gym, try to grab a quick bite. And, oh, by the way, this is Lola. I have two pet otters, one's named Charlie, one's named Lola, so I'm starting a new Instagram account for them. Charlie and Lola take the world. Um, but look at this view. All right, but I really need to stop talking. I love talking to you guys because I'm late as usual. So, see you in a jiffy. So I think this is the most incredible, amazing, blow me out of this world wedding. But the after party itself, it was in the same hotel. We just had to walk through a secret door who took us to the, through these plants and these lights. And DJ Sammy Black was playing, Tom and Collins couldn't make it, but she killed it. Everyone was on their feet until six in the morning. We didn't keep going because we had to stop. The hotel asked us to go back to our rooms but it was incredible i wish i can play the music she was playing but as you guys know for monetization reasons i can't the record label takes it down but she was super cute very nice friendly her team her manager was also a gentleman i couldn't have asked for a better wedding and an after party just there's no words to describe it so of course, after an 11 hour wedding, cause that's how Latins are, I went to Alpia de Cuchon and had this baby. Well, last night's wedding was absolutely incredible. I think you can see it in my face. Um, unfortunately, I slept in through my COVID test. I had an appointment at 11 a.m., but with the time change, didn't make it. But right in front of the hotel, guys, there's one Let me cross the street. You guys, if you've been following me for a while, know I'm not lucky on my trips. Something always goes wrong. But it's right in front of the hotel, it's like 500 pesos, so it's a good option.
So I'm not gonna do much today, but right now I'm headed to Cafe Toscana, which is right next to the hotel. It's a nice cafe. We're gonna have a nice brunch slash lunch. Um, but it's a very cute terrace. Like I said, Polanco's full of them. So I'll show you guys now. So right now we're in El Bosque de Chapultepec, the forest of Chapultepec. We're gonna go to the castle of Chapultepec, which is the castle in the area. It's a very nice view from the top. They close at 4 p.m. on Sundays. So we were lucky enough to be able to get to the top. But in this park, forest, however you wanna see it, it's also full of little markets, which is one of the things I love about Mexico. You're gonna find anything. You have to try these. These are potato chips and they put lemon, chili in them. They have all sorts of junk food. I do recommend that you save it for the last part of your trip because you may get a stomach ache if you're not used to it. But it's definitely an adventure you have to go through when you're visiting Mexico. They have something <laughs> called Papas Locas, which is Doritos. They open it, they shove it with cheese, chili, oh. chicken, anything you can think of. It's, it's amazing. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a tour guide just because of the time and they were closing as it is. 
I'm not totally sure what this castle's purpose was, but please look it up. And if you're in Mexico, check it out because it's absolutely shocking. And I know that you can rent it for events, but the views are great. It's very Instagrammable, Instagrammable, as you can see here. Definitely check out El Castillo de Chapultepec because it blew us all away. We five of us came and, and we were all in shock. All right, so my trip is coming to an end, unfortunately. I'm about to have uh, dinner with some friends in La Unica. I'll take better shots now. But this has been beyond an amazing trip. Um, I'm also doing the Mexico Miami um, business class review. So you can check that out. I'll try to put it up here once it's filmed and uploaded. Next week, in two weeks, I'm going to Vegas. So please subscribe and hit the bell notifications if you haven't already. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more food and I am going to sleep on my red eye because last night's wedding was a bomb. It was, I don't even have words to describe it. La Unica is like a Mexican European fusion, like most of the restaurants here in Polanquito. I think it was my favorite restaurant. I had never been here. It was delicious. It is very pricey. It's probably the most pricey and everything that you're gonna see right now that we ate we each paid about $100 Hello, a person, which I don't think is bad at all. Just have that in mind. Huh? plates here at La Unica were as good as they look even better they taste even better so I totally recommend them it was my first time here but I will be back I'm planning a trip back to Mexico in the summer after my traditional trips to Europe so I give them five stars now of course the very bittersweet moment of every trip I was saying goodbye to my friends at this point and this trip was particularly special not only because of the wedding but who was getting married um, and the people that attended this wedding, we filmed the soap opera together. We're all actors. Most of us are actors. We filmed the soap opera together. So it was beautiful being able to reconnect in another country after three years. We filmed during COVID. It was just an amazing experience. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next trip.